All right, here with Benil Dariush in Abu Dhabi, who takes on Mateos Gamrat, UFC 280. Mm -hmm. And Benil, you accept, you accept a fight that I'm not sure everyone in your position would have accepted. You come over to Abu Dhabi, and then Dana White of the week of the fight says that uh, Alex Volkanovsky is most likely going to get the next title shot in your weight class. How do you react to that? You know, hearing that right before you're going to go fight a tough guy on Saturday. Initial reaction, I was pissed. I was giving uh, my manager a hard time. I was, uh, you know, I was acting very emotional. But um, sat back for a second, and I, I started just putting it all together. This guy, Wolkanovsky, pound for pound king, right, currently. And he's offering to be the alternate. And so I see why they would want him. I'm, it makes sense on their part. And... Um, like seeing that, okay, whatever. And then at the same time, I know I have a very tough opponent in front of me, and I really do enjoy fighting. Like I, that's, uh, it's my favorite activity. <laughs> like even I know it's my job, and people get sick of their job, but like the one thing I don't get sick of is is, is fighting. So I just kind of um, I sat back, kind of calmed down, and just I try to put myself in everybody else's shoes, and and and. Um, Help me calm down. I mean, obviously, I still think I got the short end of the stick, but I'm here. I'm going to get my job done, go home happy. Well, it's not even uh, just that he's the alternate. It's, it's that, you know, even beyond this, like, could he face the winner of the main event? Yeah, so that's what they're saying, too. But my focus is on today, you know, uh, let tomorrow worry about tomorrow. I, I, got, I got today to worry about, so, and, and today is Gamrot. As far as what happens in the future, you know, Dana has always said this is going to happen in the future and things have changed and, and we just don't know. So I'm not too worried about it, but um, obviously it would suck if I don't get the title shot, but that is what it is. Does it, uh, does it impact like what your goal is this week or is it just as simple as getting a win? Or do you have like some, some like, okay, yeah, that's the main goal, but here's some like some side things I would like to check off? Man, I always tell people like... The, the, the reason why I work so hard and I try so hard is, is, uh, is because I believe I was given a God-given gift. And so I don't want to squander it. The belt, it will be a um, byproduct of all the work I've put in because, because what I'm trying to do and, and not squandering my, my gift. Uh, so with that being said, I always tell people the best way I, I can explain it. Like the crown I'm looking for will come from my Lord and Savior. It ain't going to come from uh, the UFC or anybody else. Mateus Gamrot, um, describe him as a challenge, and then even just kind of relative to the other top guys in the division, he doesn't have the same name value as some of them, but how, would, how is he as a challenge? Man, you know how excited I was when I saw his fight with uh, Armand because I, I texted you, I was like, I told you, see, there's guys outside, they're not even in the top 10, and they're yeah. so good. Like, I, I don't watch a lot of fights uh, outside of my division because there's too many fights nowadays, right? And it's, it's difficult to keep up with everybody. But man, in my division, there are some dogs that people just don't even know about. And, and he was one of them. But now people know a little bit more about him. They still don't know him. But that's what I love. I, I like to fight these, these guys that are just so dang good. So I'm just excited to fight him because he's so good. And as far as the challenges he brings, I think what sets him apart, I would say, is... He has an ability to change the pace, uh, you know, from, from uh, grappling to striking, striking to grappling. And then when you think he's tired, he finds another gear. These are all things that make him special. You know, there's not a lot of fighters out there who can be tired one minute and the next minute come back stronger. And, and he proved that in his last fight and he's proved it in his other fights as well. Is that like a heart thing or that's like a, he just, that's like an IQ thing where he just knows when to turn it on? It's both because he's got a lot of experience. You know, he's fought in KSW. He, um, he has great conditioning. You could tell he has great conditioning. Like he's not lacking in that. And sometimes you'll see he'll, he'll blow his watt in, in, with, with a sprint and then he'll find himself. He'll recover and then he'll come back and, and, and do it again. And that is, that takes experience but it also takes heart because when you're tired, you need to be courageous to be able to, 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 to keep sticking to the game plan. So for him to be um, tired and, and, and still brave, it's, it's a cool thing to see. You know, you're scheduled to be at a press conference tomorrow um, and then a weigh-in, ceremony away in Dana White will be at both of those. Mm -hmm. like, do, you, do, you, do, you, do you go up to him and you don't need to be a long conversation, but just kind of say, hey, 
Like, like WTF, bro? <laughs> like, I'm here, you know? <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't know. I didn't even think about it. I, I, I didn't, uh, I forgot I was part of the, uh, what is it the called? Conference. The press conference. Um, yeah, man, maybe I'll go up to him and say something. We'll see. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm sure you would do it very politely and professionally. but I'll, No, I'll probably just threaten him. <laughs> I'll be like, listen, buddy. No. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I'll, I'll go talk to him, see what's going on. Yeah. I mean, I would, that would leave me to my last question is that it, if they decide to go with Alex and if, they, it, if they're like, hey, you know, we're going to Brazil, we're going to Perth, you know, now, and it's, it's like you've mentioned, pound for pound guy, like we're sorry you're deserving of yeah. it, but this is just the bigger one. Would you do this again if they come to you and say, would you fight Rafael Fazit, you know, or, or would Ali and your wife have to stage an intervention at that point? <laughs> Man, now you're putting me in a tough spot because I know Ali is going to call me if I, as soon as he sees this interview or my wife is going to... Actually, she, hopefully she doesn't listen to it. I'll just, pretend, I'll just say it was really bad. Um, man, it, it, as long as they give me a good opponent, like a, a dog, it's going to be hard for me to say no. So if it's... Um, and also Australia. I love Australia. So yeah. there's, a lot of, there's a lot going on there. So I... I the way I'm feeling right now, I would definitely say yes. But um, things might change in the future after I get yelled at. And I guess one last thing for the fight on Saturday. What do you think will be the biggest key? What do you think will? You, you've talked about how good this guy is and what he brings to the table. What do you think will be the main difference that gets it done for you? I just I'm better. I enjoy this and I'm better and I'm. I plan on having a great time out there. Yeah, well, I can't wait, man. Looking yeah. forward to it. Good to see you out here. Thank you, brother. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.